Digipod at sea in the English Channel, the Times Square of marine traffic. The Vortigan is a ferry going between Dover, Calais, and Dunkirk occasionally. Uh, the, you will see the actual operation of automatic acquisition, which means it's a self-plotting radar. And the, the plotted vectors uh, meet the full International Maritime uh, Organization specifications, including accuracy and response time, to ensure that all of the, the true vectors are shown in our true aspect, agreeing exactly with what a, a bridge officer would see when uh, viewing other vessels in the vicinity through his glasses. Uh, it's a foggy day on the Vortigan, and you see we have already started, and the system is, uh, uh, has left Dover, heading toward Calais. Our own ship is in the center with a bright vector, and you can see the heading mark on the edge of the screen. Uh, traffic is, is uh, shown between own ship and, and the English coastline behind us, which was a dotted outline. That was a north up presentation. The officer has changed it to head up, uh, and you can see a, a, a dancing symbol that uh, a joystick is placed on the vessel that's considered the most dangerous. Uh, the true vectors show uh, the own ship going and would pass, the other vessel would pass astern of us quite nicely. We're on a six mile scale with six minute vectors. That's a tenth of a mile length. And on a six mile scale, that, was, uh, that would be a 20 knots, uh, approximately two miles for the vector length. Uh, the rest of the traffic is something you wouldn't see on a, uh, a normal uh, ARPA that meets the minimum standards worldwide. Digiplot being auto acquisition far exceeds those standards. Uh, we have highlighted the CPA and time to CPA as a tenth of a mile and their six minute vector length. So you can see we've changed to a relative plot and incremented in one minute increments, uh, seven, eight, nine. He's just passing ahead of our own ship shown as a circle in the center. Now returning back to the true vector, head up, you can see we both will be at the same spot in the water at the same instant in time. That means collision. We rotate it so that you can see what it would look like in a north up display. Again, looking at the relative, uh, it's still a very close passing absolute collision situation. Again, back to true, true vectors being plotted. Notice the uh, uh, to our right and the bottom of the screen is a very long vector. That's a hovercraft going probably 50 knots heading uh, from Calais to Dover. We've just punched the trial maneuver button of turning right 30 degrees and each second in real time is equivalent to 30 seconds of trial maneuver prediction time. So we pass clear by turning 30 degrees of the, of the offending vessel. Now we release the spring-loaded switch and it returns to the real situation, showing that we were still having a collision unless we really executed that 30 degree right turn. This is another picture showing a hovercraft leaving Dover uh, on the following day. All of these uh, results are of the digiplot with the radar outline, land outlines. Uh, we do not display the radar uh, on this. This is exactly what is being uh, delivered now uh, on the Nevionics e-charts that are vector charts so that you see it against a blank screen uh, there but uh, this if you can imagine this on the uh, on the current uh, electronic charts it will be a complete maneuvering display including both anti-collision and grounding prevention you notice the hovercraft plotting at 60 knots roughly three times the length of our 20 knot uh, ferry uh, going ahead of, the, uh, of a tanker going towards Rotterdam, followed by a couple of other vessels. And again, a ferry behind us coming out of, uh, coming out of Dover, probably heading on for, uh, for to Dunkirk. This is on a north up display. The French coast buoys are beginning to be seen forward, and the hovercraft has just passed across the bow of the tanker we saw a few moments ago heading northeast. Now the hovercraft is going across our bow. He uh, 
uh, our vector length is shown as six minutes on a six mile scale. So he's uh, a, tenth of, a tenth of the two miles ahead of us. That is at the 20 knot speed. Display of the vectors is daylight display in, in sunlight. It happens that we're in a shadowy situation late in the day. Uh, it's shadowing the rest of the screen, but uh, you can't see anything on the Digiplot control panel. In the new design, you incorporating the, uh, the charts, the e-charts, it will be on a display that's uh, either at least 17 inches for, a, say, an Apple, Apple uh, laptop or a 20-inch iMac or possibly up to 30 inches. And, of course, it would work uh, displaying the same results. Now, this is a, a different model of Digiplot where we actually superimpose the vectors from the ARPA on top of a radar display. You can see the English Channel coast in, in a gr bright green. This is, was an air traffic control display which had two colors uh, for showing the, uh, the vectors and synthetic data generated by the computer uh, different from the, uh, the raw radar. In, in the case of a chart, raw radar would tend to obscure uh, useful uh, navigation data on the e-charts, which has been avoided by a unique patentable design. Buoys are easily separated from slow-moving vessels, as you can see by the, the fishing vessels with short vectors versus the circles only for uh, stationary objects. The tip of the vector is just shown at the entrance to uh, Dover Harbor at six minutes. That's it.